Hey folks, welcome to Moonshift Audio. If you spent any time at all in audio forums or subreddits or in YouTube comment sections, then I reckon at some point you probably heard someone tell someone else, just use your ears. But what does that actually mean? I can't imagine there's many people who are sitting there working on music and they're not listening at all. You know, we're all using our ears when we work on this stuff. So what I think people mean when they say use your ears is to use your ear. And that's an important distinction. To me, your ear is something that you develop over time. It's about experience and it's about instinct. When I pull up a rough mix for the first time, usually within the first playthrough, I have got an idea of what's missing, what's wrong, what the issues are, what's working well, what the essence of the mix is, what tools I'm going to need to employ to address any problems. And the reason I can come to these kind of decisions so quickly is because I've done it hundreds of times before and I've been listening critically for a long time. To give you an analogy about how this sort of thing can develop, I would think about what I would do if someone said to me, right, you can have any camera you want, any lens you want, and I want you to take the best photo you can of that statue over there. Now, I am not very clued up at all when it comes to photography, so I'd probably get online and I'd start reading about, you know, well, what kind of cameras are good, what lenses are suitable for this, how to frame a shot, and I'd be going in completely blind. Whereas a pro photographer would have developed their eye over years, they will take one look at that statue and I'll be like, okay, yep, yeah, it's that. I'm going to take it from this distance. I'm going to use this lens. I'm going to use this kind of camera. I want it to be a bit vintage, so I'm going to use this kind of film. They'll be looking at the light. They'll know how to set the aperture. They'll be thinking about what time of day it is, what angle to use, how to frame the shot. And all of this will come quite naturally to them because they've probably taken thousands of photos before. They've probably taken photos of statues before. They will have worked at this time of day before. And all of that previous experience feeds into them developing a natural eye for photography. It's the same with audio. You don't just need to use your ears, you need to develop an ear. You need to develop a musical and technical ear and you need to rely on that to make your decisions. But what if you're just learning mixing or production and you haven't had time to develop this ear yet? If you ask me, the honest truth is that there's no substitute for experience. It takes time and it takes practice. The best thing you can possibly do is to keep working on music. The more that you do it, the better your ear will get. Let's say you're working on a track tomorrow and, I don't know, the bass line is particularly boomy. It's got like one note that every time it's played, it's just really, really resonating. You might find you end up scratching your head a bit. You might end up treating that with a dynamic EQ or multiband compression or something like that. Then let's say maybe six months from now, you're working on another track where you have a similar issue. The bass line is particularly boomy or maybe the kick drum has got this big resonance on it. That previous experience you've had of solving a similar problem is going to feed into your experience. So you're going to spend a lot less time thinking, trying to work out the solution, and you're probably just going to be able to reach in and resolve that a lot more quickly. And when you're working with music, you do tend to encounter the same sorts of problems again and again. Sure, each mix has got its own challenges, but all of the previous experience that we've had feeds into developing your own ear, and the more work you do, the more that you'll realize that your moves are starting to become instinctive. You're not having to think about them so much, and when you don't have to think so much, you can just get into the flow more. You'll start making EQ moves and compression moves, and you're mixing from the heart rather than from the brain, and that can really help you when you're getting some more emotion and depth into your mixes. Another way to accelerate the development of your ear is to use websites like Sound Gym, which are particularly good for learning to identify frequencies. And if you get good at that, it can really help you when it comes to EQing. For example, if I'm listening to a vocal and I can hear a resonance there, I've usually got a pretty good idea of what kind of frequency I'm hearing it at before I even open an EQ, so I don't have to spend nearly so much time sweeping around and trying to find a bit that I'm going to notch out. I can identify that just by hearing it. Sound Gym is also great for learning how to identify distortion, perhaps over compression, things like panning. There's some really good exercises in there that can definitely help you to develop your ear more quickly. Obviously, another way that you can develop your ear is by reading online and watching YouTube tutorials. Now, I am a little bit skeptical of sort of general advice and particularly of sort of formulas, you know, like, for example, if you're mixing a vocal, you always roll off everything up to 100 hertz. You always boost 200 for a bit of body you always scoop out 350 hertz because that's where the mud is. You know, these frequencies are always going to be source dependent. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you do hear the same advice coming from various reputable sources, there's usually something in it. And if you're not confident in your own ear, then working with these formulas can be a good sort of starting point for you. But it's important to make sure you always do listen 
and try and think critically. Don't just, you know, if you just start doing these moves blind every time you pull up a vocal without thinking about it, then your mixes aren't going to benefit and your ear is not going to develop. One thing that felt like a big step for me when I was developing my ear was the first time that I got a mix from a pro. I've been working on a track for about a week and it just wasn't working. I don't know, I felt like I got it, you know, some of the way there and then I just hit a wall and I realized that I was just spending time kind of like trying something out, undoing it, trying something different, nothing was working and I felt like I was just tying myself in knots. So I reached out to a professional mix engineer and when they sent the mix back, it was like just so eye-opening. I just suddenly, yeah, I could have done the vocal like that or wow. I didn't think I could get away with putting that much treble on that guitar. You know, it was just like so many kind of aha moments. And although I was kind of starting to use reference tracks at that point, to actually hear someone professionally mix the same material that I was working on was just so, so valuable. Now, there are some mixes out there like me who offer a mix where they'll also show you under the hood. For example, I offer a mix exploder service where I do a mix for you and then I make you a personalized video where I go through every track, every plugin, show you exactly what I did, talk about my methodology, the problems I encountered with the audio, how I fixed them and that sort of thing. I'm also very happy to send you the session files so you can actually open them up yourself and see what I did in there. And there are other mix engineers who offer these kind of services as well. So that's a really, really great way to learn. Of course, a big part of this journey is actually being able to hear as much as possible. It's all very well doing these exercises, but if you're listening on like a $10 set of earbuds from Amazon, then you're just not going to be able to hear everything that's going on. And if you're trying to train your ears, you want to be able to hear as much as possible. I certainly noticed every time I upgraded my monitoring, whether it was a new set of monitors or a set of better headphones, and particularly when I started to be able to put a little bit of room treatment up. Even years ago when my studio was just down one end of my bedroom and I've put the first panels up, I put a couple of bass traps up, hung them like pictures behind the speakers, and I did the points of first reflection. And suddenly stereo image just opened up i kind of started to get a sense of what the phantom center was all about and the more i worked in that room and subsequently in even better rooms the more i learned about what to listen for and how to work better if you can't afford expensive speakers or you can't treat your room because you're in a rented accommodation or something like that then a decent pair of headphones is a really really good investment Another thing you can do is to get in a pro studio and just listen. When you've got a few mixes that you've been working on, as well as some reference material or some tracks that you really like the mix on, see if you can get a cheap session in a local studio just for an hour or two hours. A lot of engineers will be very happy to just let you in there and set you off and you can just sit there and listen to music. The first time I took a mix that I was working on into the control room of a decent studio, it was mind blowing. It was like... Everything that I'd been listening to was in this little box and then suddenly I could just hear it all spread out across the soundstage and the frequency spectrum. And it was just like, wow, I've got way too much reverb in that. Wow, is that? I felt like I was hearing transients for the first time. It really can be a sort of landmark experience. It doesn't have to cost that much and I'd recommend it to anyone. Another great thing to do when you're developing your ear is use reference tracks. By finding a track that's in a similar style and genre to the one that you're working on, you can get a really good sense of whether the overall balance that you're creating is suitable, how loud various things in the mix can be, how much reverb and delay and other effects are used, and whether you're sort of overcooking things like EQ and compression. Above all though, just stick with it. If you could learn all this stuff overnight, then literally everyone would be doing it. But with time and a bit of dedication, you will get better and you can have a lot of fun learning along the way. That's it for this week. If you've got any thoughts on developing your ear, then let me know down in the comments. And please do like and subscribe for more tips, tricks, resources, and downloads from me at Moonshift Audio. Till next time.